Okay, we are at section 15.5, the pendulum. Uh, and in the interest of time, this will actually be the last section we're going to cover. There is 15.6 and 15.7, uh, damped oscillations and forced oscillations. There is a, uh, uh, an interesting bit at the end of forced oscillations on the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. If you just look up Tacoma Narrows Bridge, you'll see the oscillation of a concrete bridge, which is pretty amazing if you've never ever uh, seen the the um, the video. It's an old video. It's uh, I forget what years uh, that happened, but uh, we're we're just going to do fifteen point five and end the chapter. So let's uh, go to the uh, PowerPoint. <coughs> Let me make sure that okay uh, for. Small angles theta, a simple pendulum's motion can be modeled as a simple harmonic motion about the equilibrium position, theta equals zero. Uh, so we have force equals mass times acceleration, and you can see that acceleration is uh, uh, m minus mg sine theta. That's the, the little uh, vector that, that's to the side, and it's negative because it's in the... Uh, uh, it's towards the, the theta equals zero side. So um, mass equals to the, uh, the second derivative of the uh, position vector S. Um, the, uh, so S is equal to LO, in other words, S is equal to length times theta. Uh, DS squared is equal to L D squared theta DT. Um, <clears throat> let's see where my writings. Uh, R and uh, so d theta, if we substitute that, uh, uh, <coughs> if we look up at the top, we, we where the minus mg sine theta equals m d squared s d t squared, uh, the m's come out, so ds squared is equal to um, ds squared dt squared is equal to g sine theta. Uh, we use that in combination with the uh, uh, LD squared theta DT squared to get DT theta uh, DT squared equals minus GL sine uh, theta. And simple harmonic motion DX squared DT squared is equal to minus KMX. So in this one, we have a sine theta. And in this one, we have an X, so it's, they're not really the same. They're not the same. However, if we keep, if you <coughs> express the angle in radians, uh, if you look at the angle in degrees and the angle in radians and the sine of the angle, if you look at those first three columns, you'll see for angles um, expressed in radians, it's very close to the sine of the angle. Up until you get a little past uh, 10 degrees, it, um, once you get to 15, 20, and 30 degrees, there's quite a bit of, of uh, difference. You can see the percent difference increases at 15, 20, and 30 degrees. So if we keep it small, we can model, um, we can model the, the uh, uh, instead of sine theta, we can have minus gl theta for small values of theta um and so that that does look like simple harmonic motion so theta equals theta max where theta max would be the largest angle deviation times cosine omega t plus phi <coughs> <coughs> excuse me cosine omega t plus phi where omega is equal to the square root of gl um and the period is equal to t uh, 2 pi divided by omega. Um, and so since omega is equal to the, the square root of gl, 1 over omega is equal to the square root of lg. So the period is equal to 2 pi uh, square root of lg. Uh, so a grandfather clock in the opening story depends on the period of a pendulum to keep correct time. Suppose the grandfather clock is calibrated correctly and then, then a mis mischievous child slides the bob of the pendulum downward on the oscillating rod. The grandfather clock runs slow, fast, or correctly. 
Well, let's look at let's look at uh, the period is equal to two pi square root of LG. So if L increases, even though it's the square root of it, if L increases, the period is going to increase. Uh, and the period increases, then it's going to run slower. All right, let's look. Uh, suppose the grandfather clock is calibrated correctly at the sea level, and then it's, is then taken to the top of a very tall mountain. The grandfather clock now runs slow, faster, correctly. Well, let's look at the equation again. G, G is in the denominator. So the, the G at sea level is different than the G at the high mountain. It's, it decreases, so the, um, that'll change the period. The, <clears throat> the <coughs> excuse me, um, the, at the top of the mountain, the value of G, I'm, I'm, G is less uh, than at sea level, so at the period of the pendulum will increase. If, if the G decreases, the period increases, uh, just like if L increases, the if the length increases, uh, T increases. So it's going to run slow also. Um, now let's look at uh, the f physical pendulum. Basically, it's uh, the torque is equal to mg d sine theta. Uh, torque is equal to I alpha. Uh, basically, I'm going to get down to the bottom. The omega equals MGD, uh, moment of inertia. So the period is equal to 2 pi omega. Uh, so uh, the omega, uh, <clears throat> omega is equal to the square root of MGD over I. Uh, and for a torsional pendulum, we'll go through this quickly. Kappa is the torsional uh equivalent of of the spring constant k and omega equals the square root of kappa i where i is the moment of inertia and the period here t equals 2 pi uh, square root of i over kappa uh, and that's going to do it for the end of uh we're not going to do damped oscillations um we're not going to uh we're not going to do forced oscillations but i did want to point out to you uh, this is the uh, drawing of the Tacoma, or not a drawing, this is the actual uh, screen captures of the uh, resonance that occurred at uh, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. You can look up the Tacoma Narrows Bridge and they have video of it collapsing. Uh, I think that's it. So we're going to end uh, chapter 15 here.